The next thing it'll do, we need to concentrate on are different levels because when you have villages, you need to do you need to think in four inch levels between layers of the village in order to have one level show uh, behind another level. And uh, just as an example here, this is uh, this is two different things that the sculpting tool can do for you. Uh, we'll, we'll take this one first. Uh, there's this and this. These are the same ways of sculpting it, and I'm going to do this for you in just a second. And then this is a third way, but I'll show you the difference in uh, in how these all work. Uh, first of all, if I were to take the sculpting tool again, and instead of a mountain, if I was just going to deface a little this uh, just gently, you know, here and there, just taking it away one piece at a time. You kind of get it like that. And you go through it. Now, if you were going to color this and make it North Pole, you might do something like this. This is a stratosphere blue with a little sparkle glaze over it after the stratosphere blue dries. So it gives you that icy Arctic look. And I'm going to show you this in a bigger scale on this model behind me uh, in a few minutes. If you want to do something for Dickens or Alpine or New England Village, same cutting of this that we just did, but this was br just brown paint, a light brown, and then uh, a light dusting of, uh, of turf that you can put on it. But if you want to do something with Halloween, say, you want to make it more spooky, then maybe you want to go across. You know, you do a horizontal cut. Now, how do you do that? Well, you take the same piece of foam, but instead of coming down like that, we're going to widen the arc a little bit, just a little bit like that, and now you're just going to cut it across. So go from left to right, and as you go from left to right, you're, all you're doing is just taking away the, the front piece on the top, the, the flat piece rather, and you go left to right. I'm doing this very quickly for you, but you get the idea. So you have now made all of these cuts going left to right where it, uh, you know, it looks more, uh, more uh, like a stacked rock cliff or something like that. And what that does for you, it creates a different effect. Instead of this, it, it goes this way. So now what I did, I finished this with black, uh, just a touch of gray here and there, but mainly black, sprinkled it with uh, glitter, uh, the purple glitter, and then a light dusting of green, so it gives you that spooky look. Another way you can finish off things is a vertical look. That's horizontal. Another way is uh, with a vertical look. Now, I'm going to have to deviate one little thing and tell you that to do this is uh, wonderful with a bow cutter, but we're not talking bow cutters today. I just want to let you know this is my favorite tool. Of everything Hotwire makes, this is the lifeblood. I don't think I could live without a bow cutter. I mean, they have a shallow size. They have, uh, this is my favorite right here, the yellow, because it gives me more depth. And uh, they also have this one, which you can even put another four inch, a uh, four foot runner in here, and you can cut massive pieces of foam with this. But the bow cutter uh, will provide you with, uh, with the kind of cut that you're seeing right here. However, you can take this, this sculpting tool, as I have said, it's the number one tool, uh, you can take the sculpting tool and you can get a tension guard. Uh, it kind of expands the thing. It, it hooks right in here. It spreads this out and it makes this very taut across. So you've got a miniature bow, a bow cutter. Now how would that work? Let's just put these over here. And if we just substitute out the uh, the sculpting tools. You're not going to get as good a cut with a bow cutter, but it's going to be close. You're still going to be able to dipsy doodle it back and forth. The key with a bow cutter is, see, you go, the key with a bow cutter is you go up and down, back and forth, in and out. So there's three things you're doing with a bow cutter movement. You can do the same thing if you have this little guard on your 
uh, sculpting tool and it just creates that same kind of look. So this is the finish you get and then again it's the same process of how do you finish it. This, the sculpting tool gives you the ability to carve the foam but you're going to finish it either with uh, a blue, an arctic look, uh, something that's going to be Alpine, Dickens, New England, etc. Here's a Halloween finish. It's the same exact finish. It always depends on how you finish it up, not necessarily how you sculpt it. And the paint covers up all your mistakes anyway, so people should uh, really be happy when they, they finish this. Now, if you had this, and uh, for some reason you didn't have the guard, if you really have a firm hand, you can always take this and hold it taut and if you're strong enough like that, you can keep it taut and you can still go through the process up and down, back and forth, in and out. You, that's the pro you need to do all three things as you move your way across to get this look.